welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be doing a little speed paint here with me, doing a piece of artwork, and this was originally actually going to be a video about me reviewing this watercolor box you see here, but eventually I just decided that this video went in a little bit of a different direction and I'll still be going over the palette here a little bit, but mostly I just wanted to pick a topic of discussion and go over that a little bit, but we'll get into this video here. I'll talk a little bit about the palette, what I'm doing with it, and then we'll get on to discussing the topic. So here I have a watercolor palette set and to be honest with you guys, I was mainly attracted to it because it came in a little wooden box and I thought that that aesthetic was just pleasing and you know, it has a lot of these little pans here that you can see, all kinds of different colors. I assume it comes with a paintbrush, so this is the main reason why I was attracted to it and I figured if I really didn't like the paints, I could take them out and fill them with paints that I liked or put something else in the box, you know. I just thought it would be a fun little video to mess around with some cheaper off-brand paints and see what I can create with them. I also just want to mention really quick that I'm sorry for my nasally voice. I'm not sick, I just think I have allergies, so I'm sorry if I sound a little funny. Getting to unboxing these paints, the off-brand is Handmade Modern, and I got these at Target. I don't know if I said that already, but they're from Target. 24 count pan watercolors. Let's just unbox this here, get the packaging off. As we can see here, got this little box, and looks like they have a wood burned logo on the top here. The design is nothing fancy, but I still thought it would be a cute thing to try just to test out the quality of these. And I don't really expect anything too crazy just because they are off brand, but I just wanted to try something for fun. You know, maybe this is a decent option. Sometimes you can find supplies that are deceivingly nice. Like the packaging suggested, it does come with two paintbrushes and all these colors and little pans. Hopefully these are not too chalky because I know that's a problem you can run into with a lot of cheaper watercolors but I am excited to try these out. So checking out the brushes here, one thing I did think was really cool just because obviously these cheaper palettes are made for beginners and I thought it was cool that it told you, you know, what the brush was supposed to be used for. So it says for fill and sharp edges, medium bright, and it is a flat brush as you can see. And the quality feels pretty nice. It's not loose or anything, and the handle is nice to hold. And then it also comes with a second brush, which also tells you, you know, what it's for, which is details and line work. And it's a small round brush, which is really cool. Again, doesn't feel, you know, super fancy, but the quality is nice. It doesn't feel, the head does not feel loose in any way and the point looks nice on it. It's not frayed or anything. So yeah, so far, really good beginner's set. So now that we're done examining the packaging and the paints, let's get on to painting. So while I am activating these paints and doing up all the swatches here, I figured I'd start talking about the actual painting first and then we'll move on kind of to the topic of the video. So as you can see in the thumbnail, I'm doing this mushroom wreath, and if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have noticed that this is kind of an older painting now. Um, I just didn't quite get around to filming the voiceover for this video until a little bit later, and I figured that, you know, I wanted to get a holiday video out before the year was over, so I prioritized that instead of this one but I still got the footage for this video and I thought the topic for this video 
which we'll talk about in a minute, is actually kind of important. So I figured I would still post this even though this artwork is just a few months old. But I thought that was alright. It's still not a terrible piece, but we'll, we'll go into that a little bit more later. So as I'm swatching the paints, I guess it's a good idea to mention that surprisingly these are not nearly as bad as I expected them to be. I know a lot of cheaper paints are quite chalky and I actually have a another cheap brand, the Artist Loft brand, that are very chalky and I think in the end I may end up using these paints down the road. They're definitely not high quality but they're not terrible quality either. I think they're really good paints for beginners and maybe I'll be using them in my sketchbook. I won't be using them for any finished pieces, but they're definitely fun to play with, especially if I just want to mess around with ideas and experiment. So now that we have the paints out of the way, I can kind of move on and start talking about the topic of discussion of this video, um, as well as a little bit about the actual painting, which kind of go hand in hand. So today I wanted to talk about kind of what happens when everything kind of goes wrong and what I mean by that is when you have a piece of artwork that doesn't necessarily turn out the way you thought it would. I thought that this would be an important discussion just because this happens a lot and artists experience this quite a bit. I think it's something really important to kind of embrace not everything always turns out the way you want it to and that's okay. So what happened with this piece specifically is I just was really inspired by the idea and I started working on it and I think in the middle of me working on it I kind of ran into my yearly art block kind of burnout which I usually get about this time of the year that I was making this painting and I think it's just because I usually get really inspired by the autumnal season. I feel like that's my most inspirational time of the year. It's post-inktober and autumn is where I exert the most of my creative energy. And I, I just always get burnout coming up to the holidays and I'm always just extra tired because things become extra busy. And I think that's kind of what happened with this piece. I just lost inspiration in the middle of working on it. I did what I thought was best, which was just push myself through it and finish it. And I'm glad that I did because a lot of the times if you feel burnt out or uninspired by a piece and you just push yourself through it and you finish it, it could end up being something that you're really proud of and something that you really love. And this didn't really end up being that piece for me, but that's alright because I was hoping that it would be that for somebody else. And oddly enough, I actually did get a very unexpected reaction on Instagram when I did post this a few months ago, which is amazing. I have such good supporters on my accounts, and I'm glad that some of you found some sort of inspiration, and I'm glad that some of you were able to enjoy it more than I was, which is the whole point of art. That's why art is so amazing. Everybody sees stuff different, and I'm glad that this piece was that little bit of inspiration for some of you guys. So without rambling on too much, um, I want to kind of elaborate what to do when you feel like you are in an art block or when you feel burnt out and don't know what to do. So unfortunately this is probably an answer that a lot of you don't want to hear, but sometimes the best way to get through art block or to get through a burnout is just to keep going. And that is what I learned doing this piece. If I'm being quite honest, I like it more looking at it now, looking back at the footage than I did when I made it. I was a lot more disappointed when I actually finished it and now I actually, I'm glad that I finished it. I like the way to the that it looks and I think I didn't like it because it's a little bit more loose compared to some of my finished works and I think maybe that's why I didn't like it. It kind of felt like it was sloppy to me and I felt like I rushed through it because I kind of did. I just wanted to finish it but despite all the circumstances I'm actually happy with this piece now because it was such a challenge for me to push through it and even though it's not the most complicated of pieces I'm, I'm glad that I finished it and that just proves that I can do this and so can you. So if you guys are struggling with art block, just keep pushing through it, 
inspiration will hit. If you find yourself struggling, just do things that inspire you. Surround yourself with things that inspire you. A lot of the times when I'm feeling a bit of burnout or a bit of art block, I just look at things that inspire me. I go on Pinterest, I go on Instagram because I'm following tons of artists that inspire me on a regular basis. A lot of the times surrounding myself with things that inspire me will strike inspiration in me to create something that I am proud of and something that I really want to create. And sometimes, honestly, other than keeping yourself going and surrounding yourself with inspiring things, sometimes when you have burnout, you just need to rest. And that's okay too. Art is not something that you can really force, so sometimes when you're feeling art block or burnout, it's okay to just take a couple of days, take a week, take two weeks, to just kind of chill out and let your brain breathe. And a lot of the times, I know us artists are really guilty of pushing ourselves a little bit too far and thinking that we always have to bust out art and bust out posts all the time and create, 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 and don't stop creating. And a lot of the times that is the reason why we get burnt out. And as important as it is to push yourselves out of your comfort zones and always strive to be the best version of yourself that you can be, it's also extremely important to listen to your body when it is telling you that you need a break. There is nothing wrong with a break. You are never any less of an artist or a creator. Everybody's human, and sometimes breaks are what we need to be that best version of ourselves, and that is always okay. I hope this video was helpful or inspiring to some of you that may be struggling with art block or burnout. I know it's the beginning of the year and a lot of us artists might still be experiencing that, especially after the holidays, but I hope this helps and I hope it gives you maybe some ideas of how to get out of it or maybe what to do if you feel like you're just stuck. As always, all of the materials that I used in this piece will be listed in the description box down below and you can find me on all of my social medias which will be listed at the end of the video and linked down below as well. I hope you guys are having a wonderful start to the new year. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos featuring art like this or topics of discussion similar to this as well. I can't wait to see you guys in another video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.